I said it before, but I do not like seeing people getting scammed or screwed. And it's hard to look at what's happened to the crew and its player base in a way that doesn't qualify. In case you didn't know, Ubisoft decided to kill this game at the end of March of 2024, rendering it completely unplayable. Why? Well, the official reason is that it has become a necessity due to upcoming server infrastructure and licensing constraints. But that's okay, because the game helped them to lay the groundwork for the crew too, which is still available for purchase. At least, for now. But here's the thing, what exactly am I purchasing here? Am I purchasing a game to put in my library to play whenever the hell I want without restriction five or ten years down the road? That's what I would have thought ownership meant. Or am I just buying access to something that can be taken away whenever a company decides it's time? Most people don't look at their games as though they're cottons of milk that'll eventually go bad. And I don't think that most gamers want that. If I buy a game, I want to own it and play it as I see fit. Apparently, Ubisoft, the same company that said gamers have to get used to the idea of not owning games anymore, has a different idea. Big surprise! They think they can take a game that you paid good money for, including whatever people may have spent on microtransactions, and throw it in the trash can, rendering it completely unplayable for both multiplayer and... single player? Wait, what? You can't even play the single player game anymore? Even if you have the damn disc? What is this nonsense? Ah, uh, I'm sure it's okay, though. Maybe players inconvenienced by the decommission can get a copy of the crew, too, at a discount. Maybe even a credit for their previous microtransactions that they can no longer use. <laughs> no. This is Ubisoft we're talking about here, come on. Look, I don't automatically have an issue with digital downloads and live service games. Believe me, I don't. Digital downloads are extremely convenient for the customer, and that makes me happy. What doesn't make me happy is the idea that something can be removed from your library without your say-so. Hell, it can even happen by accident. And with a lot of these companies moving to customer support models where there is little to no human interaction, it could take a long time for something to get fixed. This whole situation just leaves me with a lot of questions. What is ownership anymore? If you could take something that I own away from me and it's not considered theft, did I ever really own that thing? And if I don't own it, why am I paying for it as though I do? What exactly am I buying here? If you decommission a game because you don't feel like supporting it anymore, how come games don't have expiry dates on them like perishable goods? Should companies be forced to put end-of-life or end-of-service dates on their products? I damn sure think so. If you knew you were only going to be able to play a game for a limited amount of time, would it affect how much you'd want to spend on it? Would it affect how much you'd spend on microtransactions? I don't know. It feels like we've been pushed into this model without having any say over it. We're treated like we don't hold any other cards except for having the money that these companies seem to covet so much. I don't think you should throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, there are some things I think could make digital distribution and live service games better for customers all around. I got a few ideas I cooked up off the top of my head. Let me know what you think in the comments, but here they are. Number one, if you have a live service game you need to post the earliest possible end-of-life date. I don't want to buy a game only to find out that it could be decommissioned in a week. Number two, if you do decide to decommission a live service game, make any single-player mode available offline. This is a no-brainer to me. And allow customers to run their own private servers if they want to continue playing multiplayer. And do that without sending the goddamn Pinkertons after them. This can actually help you generate goodwill from the customers. A novel concept, I know but it might actually make them more interested in buying future products from you. Number three, offer customers fair compensation for games that you're decommissioning. Maybe a discount code for a sequel with some in-game bonuses, something, anything. Otherwise, you're really just showing your contempt for the customer. And number four, and this one's a bit out there, I know, but I'm going to put it in here anyway because I think it's a good idea. Allow me to generate my own physical media. If companies don't want to pay for physical distribution, fine. I can make my own. Just lay out the specifications required, come up with an authentication service to verify that I'm the official owner of the game, and leave the rest to us. We're not stupid. We can figure it out. The technology is there. There just has to be a will to do it. And there ain't gonna be unless we demand it. Hell, Microsoft and Sony could even sell official branded Blu-ray burners so they get another opportunity to wet their beaks. What happened with the crew was something I've speculated on elsewhere. The idea that a company could decommission a game and try to force people into buying its sequel. 
Hell, I could even see some of these companies waiting a few years and bringing it out of their vault to try and sell it to customers again. The thing is, it's not a bad strategy, it's just damn dirty. <sighs> we deserve better than this. These companies are banking on the time that you've invested in their franchises to keep you spending more and more money and getting less and less in return. They don't want you to be happy with what you currently have. They want you to keep spending money on the next thing. I want to apologize. This video was a bit more ranty than usual. But again, even though I never played the crew, I'm still pissed about what happened and the people affected by it. The more this happens with no reaction from us, the more it'll continue to happen until it's just normal. I don't know about you, but that ain't what I want. So what do you think? Do you feel that digital downloads and live service games can be improved to be more customer friendly? Whether you agree or not, I'd love to hear what you think. So put a comment under the video and let's chat about it. And if you like the types of videos I make, consider sharing it and maybe even subscribing. Anyway, I'll see you next time. So long, my friends. Keep gaming. Why Ubisoft would ever make such a boneheaded move when they got a brand new Star Wars game coming out in a few months and it's the first one, I will never understand. I guess not everybody's good at their job.